Bible Radio Show with Dr. V from Florence, South Carolina and the Divine Church of Deliverance. Catch Transforming Bible Radio Show every Tuesday with Dr. V at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on Positive Power with Robert Zach Christian Media and Spreaker Podcast. Well, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, everybody. It's a brand new year, 2023. Thank God. And we just want to say welcome back to the Transforming Life Bible Radio Show. You are listening to your most favorite Bible radio host, Dr. V better known as Dr. Virginia Singleton, Senior Pastor of the Divine Church of Deliverance. We are located here in Florence, South Carolina at 550 Lawson Street, where we want to invite you at any time to come and fellowship with us. We promise you, if you come one time, you will come back. Amen, amen. We want to say hello to Jared Ross live on this side of the new year. We thank God for this young man of thank God you. who have been engineering and powering up this radio ministry from its conception. And we just want to thank God for him and his family. We want to thank God for every one of you who have been supporting us all down through 2022, and we are ready to move forward with you in this new beginning of 2023. Amen to all of our favorite supporters. Amen. And we just thank God for all of you. But most of all, we thank God for Jesus who have made it possible even up to this very point in time that we are able to be back with you on the Transforming Lives Bible Radio Show Ministry on tonight, our first podcast in the brand new year. So we say Happy New Year, belated to every one of you. And you know how we do it. Before we move forward, we have to give honor to the one who have made this possible just for us. Pray with me for just a moment. Precious Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we just want to pause to tell you thank you. Father God, we want to thank you for life, health, and strength. Father, we thank you for the blood that is still flowing warm in our veins. Father God, we thank you for you brought us down through 2022. And Father God, You had mercy, and you saw fit, not because of who we are, not because of anything that we have done, but, Father God, because of your tender grace and your love and mercy and kindness, you saw fit to see us come over into a brand new year, 2023. And for that, oh, God, we just want to tell you thank you. Father God, we thank you right now. For the transforming lives by the radio ministry that you have had your hand upon and you have kept us, oh God. And you have allowed us through Jerry Ross, oh God, Jerry Ross Live worldwide and through Positive Power 21 dot all to go out to the masses, oh God. And we know that some lives have been transformed, oh God, and renewed by this word. And for that, we want to say, Thank you. And, Father God, we're looking forward to that down through this 2023 year. We know that even more lives are going to be touched and transformed because of this word. And, oh, God, we ask that you continue to keep us, continue to save us, continue to move us in this new beginning that you have brought forth, oh, God, that we might do your will, oh, God, and that your work may continue to be completed as pleasing in your sight. Lord, continue to honor this servant, oh God, under your mighty hand, that he do season, God, as you see fit. You will elevate, oh God, because only you, God, do your elevations in the kingdom of God. Father God, we ask right now, Lord, let this thy servant 
continue to decrease in her flesh, O God, as we continue to increase in thine Holy Spirit. Lord, that we will do the works, O God, that you have charged at our hands to do, that you will be pleased with us. We thank you now in the name of the Father and in the name of the Son and in the name of the precious Holy Ghost. Thank you right now for transforming lives and for the divine church of deliverance. We thank you in Jesus the Christ's name we pray. And your people say amen, amen, and amen. Again, we want to say welcome back to the Transforming Life Bible Radio Show to the first podcast of the new year. Amen and amen. And we're just pleased as punch to have every one of you on this podcast with us on tonight. And as always and will always be, there is a word from the Lord to release to the body of Christ on tonight. To begin this new year, the Spirit has given unto us, we will come from the book of the prophet Isaiah, from the book of Isaiah chapter 43, amen, amen, Isaiah 43, and we're going to borrow two passages from there, verses 18 and 19. Isaiah 43, verse 18 and 19, which read, Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Oh, what a powerful word that the Lord has given unto us for this new beginning. And tonight, the topic will be new beginning. Beginning. Oh, what a word to release to us at the beginning of a new season and a new year. As we go throughout this discussion on tonight, we want to keep in mind what we are going to be talking about tonight and what these two passages is exhorting is God's declaration to the Israelites concerning his promise that he made to them to preserve them. Oh, isn't that an awesome promise to receive from the Lord? And and even we know as we started back and we've been talking in many times in many Bible study discussions, and even we probably have heard from our individual leaderships how hard-headed, stiff-necked, and the and rebellious the Israelites were. But that did not stop God from loving them. And he promised them that I am going to preserve you no matter what. So in these two passages, we are going to uh, try to, with the help of the Holy Spirit, bring some kind of insight to what is a new beginning and why are new beginnings so important, why it has to be out with the old and in with the new. And we have to really capitalize on that concept at each beginning of the year. So now, and then again, we want to thank God for every one of you that made it over that crossed over into this 2023 year. Amen. And let us be prayerful for those who may have lost loved ones, maybe down through 2022, right at the ending of the year. And believe it or not, the year just came in, and so many have already lost loved ones. Amen. And the year just 
came in. Let us also be very prayerful for um, Dahmer um, Hamlin, you know, uh, who is in the hospital. He's critically in critical condition. Let us pray for that young football player. Amen. That whatever God's will is, but let us pray for him that God will grant him the life to continue in this year. Amen. So now, another year has ended. And the Lord tonight is releasing a new beginning for the body of Christ. He's giving us a fresh start. I don't know how many of you on this line need a fresh start or desire a fresh start, but if you can see, Dr. V, I'm raising up both of my hands, my left and my right. I desire and need a fresh start from the Lord. It's a brand new season that the Lord has granted us, full of prophetic promise as well as potential. This means what for us? This means we have a new season which requires new challenges as well as responsibilities from you and I as the people of God. See, new beginnings comes with challenges and responsibilities. But we don't have to become fearful of these new challenges and responsibilities because right from the beginning, God is with us. He never brings us into a thing alone because God never sent us into anything. If he brings us into it, that means he is in it with us. And let us not tonight, dear children of the Most High God, let us not lose sight of that same promise that the Lord made unto the Israelites that he would preserve them no matter what we have done as long as we keep repenting and keep turning away from our own paths and our own wrongs and our ways of doing things that was not in the will of God and we stay in the will of God he will also preserve us. Now, in order to embrace a new beginning, in order to begin to embrace a new season, and in order to embrace a fresh start in God, God asks, not Dr. V, God asks that we release things from our past. Why? What he's saying, let your past go because the past is the past. Why do we need to release our past? Why is God saying that before we can release the new beginning that he is presenting us, before we can embrace the new season, before we can embrace the fresh start that God has provided for us, he's saying that we got to release our past. Why? Because he wants us to be able to walk forward without any hindrance, without any baggage or without any limitation because that is what things from our past does. It will hinder us. It will cause us to carry old baggage, old weight on us. That's why the Apostle Paul tells us to let this flesh die dead. And he also says, pull off every weight that so easily 
beset you. Because Paul knows that we keep carrying those sins, that we keep carrying those wrongdoings, those hurts, and whatever those old challenges, those things that we had it all with every day, eventually the adversary will cause us to carry them so much and focus on them so much that we'll take our focus off of where it needs to be, which is on the Lord and our relationship with God, and we'll start focusing on all those challenges, those negative things that we have tried to deal with, and they still have not gone away. But the Lord said, leave those things in the past, because the past is the past. If I have forgiven you for these things, you brought them to me, you repented of them, I have forgiven you, they're in your past, release them, and let them go. Because I want you to be able to move forward in this new beginning that I'm offering you without any hindrance, without that old baggage, and without anything to limit you from your past. See, you cannot move to your next level. It is saying you cannot move to your next unless you do what the Apostle Paul told us in Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14. He said, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before me. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. What was Apostle Paul saying? He said, I may not have obtained everything that I should have. I may not have perfected everything in my life. He said, but one thing I do know, he said that those things in my past, the issues that I had, that stuff is behind me now. The Lord has forgiven me for all of that. When I walk in the shoes of Saul, he said, I ain't Saul no more. I am not that same person. He said, when I had my the mass road of Damascus experience, that I became a changed man. And I'm leaving that old stuff behind me. And I'm walking in the newness, in the new beginning that God gave me. And I will not allow Saul to hinder me from being Paul, wherein the Lord has now called me into the newness of life to become the greatest missionary who have ever lived. Do you hear what is being said tonight? When God has given us a new beginning, where we know that but we, our lives were tore up from the floor, and we went to God crying out for help, and when we confessed our fault, and we repented, and we know that God forgave us, why do we still walk around with our head hung down, and we are still embarrassed, and we still carrying the weight that that a ball and that chain of sin because people may have known about what our life was like before we became born again. No, 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 Paul is saying, no, 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 no. He said, leave that alone. That is in your past. Paul said, no. One thing I do know, forgetting those things, which are behind. He said, that's behind me now. Saul is gone. That is not me anymore. He said, now I'm reaching forth 
unto those things which are before. And why? Now I got the press because in the new me, I got much work that has to be done. I got a new lease on life, and I cannot allow my past to cause me to become stagnated, that it will become a brick wall that now I got to walk in fear of moving forward in this new beginning that God has presented me with because God is depending on me to do some things. So instead of me walking in fear and allowing my past to hinder me, and cause me to walk in limitations and carry that old Paul that saw around in my suitcase. He said, I got to free myself so I can press forward to the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. He said, I got a calling on my life. He recognized a new beginning. God had charged him. I got some spiritual work that I got to do. And it's going to take everything that is in me. I got to make sure that I keep that suitcase clean out. Because from day to day, I don't know what the Lord may ask me to do. And I'm going to have to press my way through every day. So that I can reach the prize, I, I got a prize. I I I I I got a goal. I set goals for my life that I want to meet because I aim to please God. I want to show Him that I appreciate this new beginning mm, that He has presented to my life, and this is how I call him. So I'm gonna press, and I will not allow my past to cause me to lose out on this new beginning that the Lord has given unto me. Oh, my God. But he did recognize that I can't do it without Jesus Christ. Mm. In Christ Jesus, I got to stay in Christ. I got to stay connected. I got to keep a relationship. I got to stay in fellowship at whatever the cost. I cannot lose sight that I need Jesus, I cannot do this by myself. Therefore, what do each of us that's on this line tonight, that's hearing this word, I pose a question to us. What do each of us need to forget about and let go of in order to embrace the new beginning in our spiritual growth. Because, see, by the mere fact that we made it over into a new year, because many was cut off. Or well, I'm not saying that we made it over because we were better than anybody. So, so don't misunderstand what Dr. V is saying. We didn't make it over because we were better. It means that God saw some more potential in us, that he wants to perfect in us, that he wants to grow in us. There's some things that he wants to do in us. But he's saying to us tonight, I brought you over because I heard your prayers and, 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 and I was feeling the desires of your heart that you would say that there was more that you wanted to do for me. So I decided to, to, to pick you up on it. So I allowed you to come over into this new year and gave you a new lease on life. And so now I'm expecting you to take full advantage of this new beginning. So now let me see what did you leave behind in the old year so that you can take full advantage of this new beginning that I have given on to you. You know, so so there's some things that we as the children of God, literally that we should have left behind. So that would be help us to understand with the help of the Holy Ghost, what are some things that we should have left behind just in case 
we brought some of those things into the new year in our suitcase because we don't want to carry that baggage any further because we don't want to be hindered in our calling in 2023. Well, our past, first of all, that old stuff, the old way of living that we was living and things that we were doing, whether good or bad, our past. See, why do we need to leave our past behind? Because many of those things from our past, they can and will influence our future, causing a limp, uh, a limp in our walk with the Lord. Our past affects our point of view of life, and it affects how we see necessary changes to move us into our new and unfiltered lens from our past is full of regret, disappointment, pain, guilt, and shame. Because a lot of things that may have taken place in our past, just just don't go too far back. Just look at 2020, the year 2022 alone. When we think about some of the things that we encountered, some of the things that we engaged in, some of the trouble we got in, some of the things that we allowed in our lives, some of the people that we allowed in our circle, and, and we know by the right as a child of God that those things should not have been even involved in our lives. Not to say that we were better than anybody, but there's just some things as a child of God, we did not come up to par to meet the standards of God of which he calls us to walk as Christians. You know, so now as we really look back through the lens, looking back through from 2023, right quick to back across to 2022, you know, and that we will be honest with ourselves, some of that stuff was going to bring us some regret, some disappointment, pain, some guilt, and shame. If we really honestly look at it, and if we had to stand before the Lord, and the Lord became analytical with us, with the things that we chose to engage in just to be a part of the clique, just so we could be included in somebody's circle, we don't have to be in a clique. We don't have to be included in the circle, you know, because even the Lord gives us a new beginning. Sometimes he calls us out and he, he sets us apart. And sometimes it's a necessary season that the Lord will allow us to be almost, it feels like sometimes we are on a deserted island by ourselves. And sometimes we feel like God has thrown us on the backside of the wilderness. By ourselves, though we know that we are not by ourselves, but that's just the way it feels. You know, but if we look back, sometimes, you know, that stuff will cause us disappointment, pain, and guilt, and shame, presenting a burden which causes an effect on how we run our Christian race. This is why we got to learn how to take advantage of a new beginning. And we can't let anything flawed from our past cripple us from taking full advantage of the new beginning. We can't bring that old stuff into the new space, into the new season, into the new beginning. Because see, what God does, he, he gives us a brand new start, a fresh start. It's like, I'm getting rid of all of your old and, I, and I'm giving you all things that's brand new just to see what you're going to do. See, God want to trust us like that. But will we present ourselves before God, that God can depend on us, that he can trust us like that? God's word tells us at First Peter 5 and 7, this is what the Lord wants us to do in giving us a new beginning. 
He say, casting all, not some, not most. He say, but casting all your care upon him. For he careth for you. Everything from our past. When we came over into the new year, God said, no, no, no. I want you to leave all of that behind you. It doesn't matter what didn't get fixed before 2022 ended. I want you to come into 2023 feeling good about yourself. All of you, I want you to cast it at my feet. I don't care what you didn't get rid of before 2023 came in. I want you to feel that you can cast it on me. Cast all your care. On me, he said, because if you couldn't fix it in a whole year, in a few days, you're not going to do anything. He said, he said, so I want you tonight to make up in your mind to cast all your care on me, because I'm able to handle it. And not only can I handle it, I can change some things for you because I care for you. And we need to understand tonight, my dear sisters and brothers, that until we learn, until we learn how to lean on the Lord, we will continue to relive our past, and we will never embrace our new beginning because our past will always show up. To haunt us until we learn how to cast our care at Jesus' feet, until we learn how to lean on Him. As as Helen Miller, as she sang that song, He said, "I won't let you fall if you lean on Me, because I know how to hold you. You know whatever it is that we need from the Lord. His promise is, I won't let you fall." If you lean on me. And he continuously made promises to us down through and throughout his word because he knows that we are fallible beings and we are going to make mistakes as long as we are in this flesh. And that's why he tells us cast all of your care on me because I care for you. He wants us to lean on him. Even when we fall, if we are leaning on him, we will not bottom out because he will catch us when we fall and he will not let us bottom out in our fall. Then the next thing that we should do is we need to stop putting things off, meaning we need to stop procrastinating. Procrastination is a thief, kitty. Procrastination is a thief that steals our time that we could have been spending doing something with or doing something for the Lord in our works in the kingdom. Time never stops. If you look at the hands on the clock, um, there's the battery run out, and if you got those that don't run by battery, you got those that plug into the wall that run by electricity. As long as their their functionality is doing is operating com- correctly, time never stops. And time itself, whether we got a clock that runs with a, a battery or really it runs by electricity. Even if they stop, time itself never stops. Time never slows down, and time doesn't change for anyone. We cannot redeem time that has been lost or time that has passed us by. Once that time go by, we can't go back and turn that time back around and make it come back again. That span of time has already gone. And time can never be replaced. 
Oh, my goodness. We need to hear this tonight. Procrastination is no more than an excuse not to do something, such as, well, someday I'll do it. Well, sometimes I'll make it happen. Oh, well, maybe tomorrow. Or maybe next week. Sound like any of us? However, the word of God says we need to start now with no delay. We need to rid ourselves of all things that hinders or even entangles us and take hold of our new beginning. So we need to stop wasting precious time. Do we really know how precious time is? We need to live each day as though it's our last. Not even every day now. We need to live every hour. We need to live every minute, every moment, every second. Because we really don't know that just how precious time is. When that young man was on the, on the ball field, when he was playing, when he went for that tackle, he's still with us, thanks be to God, but he had no idea that that was going to happen to him. Time is precious, people of God. Then, lack of prayer is too much lack the days ago um, happening with us in our prayer life. We better believe that we are what we have left that behind. And in this new beginning, we need to make sure that we go back and revisit our prayer life. No prayer, no power. I want you to repeat that with me. <clears throat> no prayer, no power. See, Jesus, he possessed full power. Why? Why did Jesus have so much power? Well, because he used prayer throughout his life and his entire ministry. You see, prayer is the key to our power. Even the disciples asked Jesus to teach them how to pray. A lack of prayer decreased our chance of advancement in our spiritual growth. How can we expect to grow when we don't have a prayer life? Prayer, prayers is a choice. It's not a feeling. It's not about how I feel when I pray because sometimes you don't feel like praying. But pray anyway. It's not about I don't feel like praying today. Do you not know that some of the best time to communicate with God is when you don't feel like praying? Wow. So prayer is not about how you feel. We have to choose to pray. Prayer helps us to regain our ground from our adversary. That's why we got to pray. To pray our enemies away. And Prayer helps us to release more of God's anointing power into a new beginning through our prayer. When we are praying, when we are doing, especially when we are doing intercession, that is where sometimes God will open up our eyes and we are able to see the newness of things. Sometimes we may not be able, we can be working on a thing or project or whatever, and it seems so complicated that. I can't get this to work. I don't know how to start this. I don't know what to do with this. Just put it down and walk away and go somewhere and whisper a prayer. And I declare unto you, sometimes the Lord will reveal that thing to you while you are in prayer with him. And you can go right back to that thing that you that seems so complicated to you and that, wow, it works out just like that. That is why it is so important. To pray, and that and that's and that's another new beginning. That wow, now I know what I need to do. I don't have to sit and struggle. My new beginning will be as soon as it looks like I cannot deal with a situation in the moment. Pray, 
Just whisper a prayer right there. We don't even have to leave off from where we're doing. Just whisper a prayer right there in the moment. That's just how quick the Holy Ghost will show up. The Holy Spirit, he is our paraclete. Just whisper a prayer. Call on him. Summon your help. And just like that, in the moment of a twinkling of an eye, he's just that close. He's right there with you. We don't ever have to try to do anything on our own. The Bible says we have not because we ask not. Let the new beginning be. I'm going to call on my help. I'm not going to struggle through things the way that I struggled through things on my own last year because I will call on the help that I need. That's the new beginning in 2023. Then sometimes we don't have no plan. We don't have no plan. Though even though we plan, and it's good to plan, but we also need to remember that God is the master planner for our lives. But if we fail to plan, then we plan to do what? We plan to fail. When we are unsure or not clear of our plan, we become distracted and we will end up following the plan of others. It's not safe. It's not safe to understand your own plan because then we open ourselves up to the adversary to come in and just tell us anything and can show us anything. And before we know it, we fall in after something that is not even the will of God for our lives. That's why we got to stay connected with the Lord. We will end up following the plan of somebody else even the plan of the enemy, which can lead to failure or a disaster for our spiritual growth, as well as block the insight for our new beginning in Jesus Christ. Mm. So we need to see God's plan. See God's plan. We so in tune with we want to plan something on our own, so we want to get credit for ourselves. Say, look at what I did. I laid out the plan for this. You know, and when I had number one, number two, and number three, I set the priorities in the order of how I wanted them. But we never asked the Lord, God, what is your plan for me? God has a plan already for us. How often do we ask God for our new beginning? How often do we ask God, God, what is your plan? Or we just go and start setting up plans. For ourselves. Oh my goodness, that's something for us to think about. We need to seek God's plan. Why? For His plan is full of purpose for our lives. And after this, this concerning it, we, discerning it, we should do everything to follow and walk in it. I'm talking about the plan that the Lord set forth for us. How can we prove that? Well, the Word proves that for us, that we need to see God's plan, and God always have a better plan for us than we can ever design for ourselves. Jeremiah 29 and 11, you know it. It is a plan of promise that the Lord, not only did he make it to the children of Israel, but that same promise still holds true for every child of God even today. That word says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end, and some, the NIV say, to give you an expected future. So he has already laid out the plan for us. But we don't even consult God about what his will and what his plan is. We just go and set up some plans for ourselves. God has already promised us a good plan and will fulfill the purpose of it as we realize the power of his love for us. Why? Because our new beginning has already been prepared. See, he has already prepared for every new beginning. The Lord has already prepared it for us. And now, once we realize what that prepared plan is, all we have to do is walk in it to the fullness of pleasing God. 
No, we want to set something up that looks good for us, and we wonder why it failed, because it was our plan, and we left God out of it. And when we leave God out of our plan, we have already set ourselves up to fail. As Christians, we want to have a closer walk in relationship with God. Whatever it was like last year, God has given us a new lease on life for a fresh start to daily seek Jesus Christ all over again. In our spiritual walk with God and having a desire to develop a new beginning with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, there are some things that we can do to inspire us and motivate us to embrace our new beginning that the Lord has set forth for us. So now what are some of those things? And then we're going to be finished. Well, we can love Jesus more. Love on Jesus more. Meaning develop a personal close relationship. To have a personal relationship with him It is essential that we love on Jesus. We should ask him to renew our love for him and give us a deeper longing to know him through his word. Then we need to spend more time with him. There is no substitution for the quality time that we can spend alone with Jesus in prayer and study of the word of God. And we need to do it free of any other distractions. Prayer and study. This allows a refreshing of a new beginning and a deeper fellowship with him and Also, it will help us grow in him. We will never know him if we don't read and study about him. And we will never dialogue with him. We got to be in prayer. That's what we talk to him is through prayer. Then the next thing we can do, we can feed on him and the word of God. How do we feed on him, feed on Jesus and the word of God? The Bible, the Bible is our only spiritual food. In Jeremiah chapter 15 and verse 16, the prophet said this, Thy words were found, and I did eat them, and thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. For I am called by thy name, O Lord, God of hosts. You see, words are like food. We could be hungry, and even if there's nothing, and we don't have to eat anything physical, but we can get that Bible and start reading and studying that word and be prayerful and seeing that we start getting full and we forget about that we are physically hungry because the Lord, the joy of the Lord from reading and studying that word starts feeding our spirit and we become so spiritually full that we forget that we are even physically hungry. We must get this. We must approach the word of God hungry in order to taste and enjoy God. Now, I'm not saying that we got to be physically hungry when we pick up the word of God, but we got to come to him so spiritually thirsty, so spiritually hungry because we want to want more and more and more of him. Like, Lord, I want to learn more about who you are I'm not satisfied where I am in knowing who you are. So we got to come hungry for more, want to know more about who he is. Oh, hallelujah. 
We need in this new beginning, we need to begin to develop an appetite for God in this new beginning so that we can be nourished and satisfied by him through his insatiable word. Oh, sometimes no matter how much we sit up on a preaching and, and teaching, we, we can't get enough. That's why we have to, that can't be enough. We got to get in that word and study it for our own self and not just take for granted what somebody told us. We got to have hunger for ourselves to want more and so we can be saturated by the word of God. Then the next thing, we need to come to Christ in the word. Come to Christ in the word, seeking. What you talking about, Dr. V? When we come to the Bible, come seeking the Lord himself. And turn your heart to him. Seek more than just knowledge and guidance. Now, knowledge and guidance, we need knowledge and guidance when we come to the Word. But seek more for the one whom the Word was written about. John chapter 5, verses 39 and 40, Jesus himself says this. Search the Scriptures. For in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. And ye will not come to me that ye might have life. Oh, my goodness. You see, our time spent in the Word should become more about fellowship with Jesus Christ. The Lord is saying, I love it that you want to have want to have more knowledge and guidance when you come to the word and get understanding. He said, but more than gaining knowledge and more than come seeking me for guidance, I want you to seek more about me. I want you to know me as your personal savior. Because you know the more you know about me the better relationship we'll have. The more you and I can fellowship with one another, you want to know about me. And once you get to know me more, then you will gain guidance and you will gain the knowledge about who I am. But he said, I need you to seek me. You know, it's nothing wrong with having knowledge about the word of God. That's a beautiful thing. And to get guidance. From the word of God. But the Lord says, seek me. Seek me first. That's what he tells us at Matthew 6 and 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then all these things shall be added unto you. Seek the Lord first. You say, seek me first. Seek to know who I am first as your personal Savior. I want to be in a relationship with you. I don't want you just to have a relationship with the Word, with the Bible, so you can quote scriptures and you can explain them and you can teach the Word and you can preach the Word. I want you to have a relationship with me so you can lift up and tell somebody about who Jesus is. Tell somebody about me. He said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. I want you to be able to tell somebody who I am. And then read the Bible and pray. Spending time with the Lord should consist of or could consist of audible reading and praying over the word. Speaking aloud the scripture becomes our prayer to God and reading it becomes our listening. Why? Because we heard what he said. We heard what he said. When we read the Bible and sometimes some of us are more audible you know, than visual. So sometimes when we say it out loud, we hear what is being said. Sometimes it's visually visually reading it. Sometimes it's harder to understand. So, but for some people who are audible, they have to hear it. When we hear it, you know, and, and read it out loud, then it's like we are listening while it's being said, and it we tend to retain it more. You know, so new beginning. The Lord has given us a brand new beginning in 2023. What will we do 
with that new beginning. What will we do in this new season that the Lord has brought us into? What will we do now that we have been given a new lease on life? What will we do that he has turned the page over and given us a brand new clean slate to write our life story on? What will we do to bring pleasure unto the Lord and bring glory unto him? I say to you and I say to I and I say to all those who may hear this message hereafter, take advantage of this new beginning because many did not get this same opportunity. But this was a grand opportunity that the Lord had presented unto us. So let us be sure that we show him how much we appreciate it by living in the present and not in the past. We thank God for this word on tonight. We thank God for every one of you who showed up. We thank God always for all of our favorites our favorite supporters and our listeners. We thank God so much for you. We want to thank God again for any of the divine family that may be listening in. We thank God for you. We thank God so much for Jerry Ross. We thank him so, so very much for continuously engineering this podcast that it may go out to the masses. We thank God for Jerry Ross Live Worldwide, PositivePower21.org. If you can't stay on the line because there's more coming thereafter, You'll be listening next to Paula Breon on the testimony and following Paula. You'll be listening at Veronica Brown on Pearls with Veronica. Again, we say welcome to 2023. May the blessings of the Lord chase you down and overtake you in this new beginning. God bless you and may heaven smile upon you. This is Dr. V signing off. Until next week, good night. Bible Radio Show with Dr. V of Florence, South Carolina and the Divine Church of Deliverance. Catch Transforming Bible Radio Show every Tuesday with Dr. V at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on Positive Power with Double Attack Christian Media and Spreaker Podcast.